The very first time I saw Michael Punfors hit a tennis ball, I knew Georgia had a genuine blue chip. Those words belong to Dan McGill, the legendary tennis coach at the University of Georgia. But that opinion lasted all of one practice. During that first workout in Athens, I said to Coach Diaz, this boy has the ability to be our number one player. And after his second practice, I declared to one of our most loyal supporters, Pun Force is good enough to win the NCAAs. And I added jokingly, he's caught on, to, caught on to my coaching faster than anybody I've ever had. Even that bold prediction would turn out to be a watered down version of what Michael Pernforce accomplished at the University of Georgia. Pernforce came to Athens in 1983 after tearing up the junior college circuit and left in 1985 as the greatest player to ever set foot on the University of Georgia tennis courts. He started off by winning the NCAA singles title in 1984, winning 10 straight matches to do so. The fact is that after he won the NCAA title his junior year, the big sports agencies were after him, trying to sign him, encouraging him to turn pro, being Swedish. They thought, of course, he would turn pro. They didn't realize how much he loved the University of Georgia, his teammates, and Coach McGill. And Michael was important to him to try and lead the team to the team title. Georgia had never won the team championship. The big agency firm scoffed at the value or lack of value of that as they saw it. In June 1984, Michael and his roommate, fellow Swede Ola Malmquist, dropped by my home for a visit, at which time Michael told me that he had made his decision. I want to stay at Georgia and I want to help us win the team title, he said matter-of-factly, following which I embraced him, not so matter-of-factly, I was jubilant. Fern Forrest was 71 and 3 as a college senior, and his 1985 team did go on to win a national championship against UCLA. That team victory launched the University of Georgia tennis program into the rarefied air that it still enjoys today. So I think in historical impact, one could argue that with the legendary Dan McGill and the fabulous successor Manny Diaz. Michael Pernforce might be right up there with them in terms of an impact on the University of Georgia's tennis program. In terms of turning pro, all Michael did his first year was reach the finals of the French Open, one of the, the major championships in the world, beating Becker and Edberg, among others, and burst on the scene as a, one of the most charismatic players in the world of tennis. Michael had beaten Wimbledon champion Boris Becker to reach the final, but as the story goes, his eagerness to please a new sponsor almost cost him the opportunity. First major endorsement deal, I had the privilege of representing Michael, and we passed on some moderate deals coming out of uh, college. They were skeptical about his size, they were skeptical that a Swede had gone to college in the United States instead of uh, doing like Vlander and Edberg and Borg and turning pro early from Sweden. Uh, but we had confidence in Michael, and sure enough, in the French Open, we reached an agreement with Nike. However, I was worried about changing shoes in the middle of a tournament, and Michael wasn't supposed to change until Wimbledon. Uh, I was signing the deal in the French infirmary and came out, sitting next to Coach McGill, who joined Ola Momquist, uh, Michael's tour coach. And next thing I knew, Coach McGill was asking me whether the lucrative Nike deal had mandated an immediate switch. I told him no, Michael wasn't going to switch until Wimbledon. He told me to look down on the court and I saw that Michael had Nike shoes on, which bothered me a little bit, but continued to bother me a lot more when McGill started chewing on my ear. And when Becker won the first set from Michael, 6-2, I turned to Ola and lamented, Michael is wearing Nike shoes. Richard, you don't change anything in a major championship as Becker continued to be beating Michael decisively in the first set and in, into the second set. McGill continued this chastisement of me, and I finally told Ola Momquist to, to have Michael, tell him it's Swedish, to have Michael change back to his uh, other shoes. Ola was the only one with a cool head. He basically said, uh, Richard, uh, it's not the shoes, it's Boris Becker in the center court of the French Open. Anyhow, incredibly, Michael somehow got in the second set. Fast forward two hours later, Michael is toying with Boris Becker. He's hitting drop shots, toss spin lobs, passing shots. Nike is dancing in the aisles away from us, and Michael now leads 5-1 in the fourth, ready to upset Boris Becker in the quarterfinals of the French Open on the day Michael signed with Nike. Uh, McGill turns to me and says into my ear, 
Thank God he broke into those damn shoes. In some ways, Perdfors never had another moment like that. But he was a solid tour player, doing well in various majors, as he continued to fight injuries into the early 1990s. And he seemed to play a part in many great moments of tennis history. Most big tennis fans will, will uh, remember your Davis Cup final uh, in Kuyong, Australia, against Pat Cash. Uh, being up two sets to love, ending up losing it, but in a fantastic match. Uh, Pat Catch afterwards said that uh, uh, that was some of the best tennis anyone has ever played uh, against them. Uh, you played McEnroe, a round of 16 in Australian Open, uh, and most people uh, remember him getting defaulted uh, in that match. Uh, somehow you got in, in, in uh, interesting matches. Also, most people remember uh, your match in the round of 16 at Wimbledon uh, when you lost to, to Jimmy Connors after really kicking his butt for a long time, uh, but ended up losing in, in, in a heartbreaker. But even Jimmy Connors said after that match that, that that was some of the best tennis anyone has ever played against him. But in the state of Georgia, Michael rarely ever lost. And when he did, it was always great tennis. And the people that know Michael realize in terms of he had tremendous style. He was very colorful, very charismatic, on and off the court. Probably one of the most popular players to ever play on the tour. But the thing I remember a lot about Michael is the substance that he had, the character he had. And he got a lot of that from his uh, parents, uh, Martina and Bink, the late Bink, who was a wonderful guy with a great sense of humor. And uh, Michael just had his feet on the ground. He, he dealt with success and failure the same, and always had time for people. Uh, you're a great friend. Uh, you're the godfather to my daughter. I'm the godfather for your son. Uh, you've always been there when needed. You uh, needed it. You're a quality person. I was your coach for four to five years, uh, and it was an honor and uh, a lot, of, lot, lot of fun doing it. I would recommend it to anyone being your coach. Congratulations to Michael Pernfors, a 2008 inductee into the Georgia Tennis Hall of Fame.